Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Phenotex Chemicals Limited Q4 and FY23 earnings conference call. We have with us today Mr. Sanjay Tibrewala, Executive Director and CFO, Ms. Arti Junjunwala, Executive Director, Mr. Arindam Chaudhary, CEO, and Mr. Bharat Modi, Investor Relations from Strategic Advisors. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. Also, please note that Finotex has scheduled a webinar to provide business updates. The webinar is set to take place on June 2nd, Friday at 11 a.m. IST. The invite will be soon updated on the stock exchanges, and we look forward to your participation. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Arti Junjunwala. Thank you, and over to you. Thank you so much. A very good afternoon, everyone. It's my pleasure to welcome you all to Finotex Chemical Limited's Q4 FY23 earnings conference call. We have already made the financial statements and presentation available on the stock exchange and website. And I hope you all had the opportunity to pursue the same. Finotex is India's leading specialty chemical producer with a major presence in both domestic and international textile markets. We focus to expand the market by developing new products, entering new territories, and offering value-added services such as technical solutions in the specialty chemical sector. With the expansion of our Ambarnath plant capacity to an impressive 1,4,000 metric tons per annum, we are now well-equipped to not only meet the demands of the new product contracts, but also anticipate and fulfill future orders with utmost efficiency. The increased capacity of our plant signifies a significant milestone in our company's growth strategy. By ramping up production capacity, we have enhanced our ability to cater to a broader range of market demands and seize new business opportunities. With this expansion, we have positioned ourselves as a reliable and trusted partner for our customers and ensuring that we can deliver on their evolving needs, both now and in the foreseeable future. These accomplishments further demonstrate the company's commitment to leadership. I would like to thank our dedicated team for their commitment to serving quality products to our valuable customers. With this, we also continue to invest in R&D, exploring new avenues for growth and innovation. Now, speaking about sustainability, we are deeply committed to ESG principles. We understand the importance of balancing economic growth with environmental responsibility. And as such, we have integrated sustainable practices into every aspect of our operations. Our R&D team works hard to create innovative products that are eco-friendly, biodegradable, and have minimal impact on the environment. Our belief in long-term success lies in maintaining high standards of ESG and delivering value to our shareholders. With this, I would now call upon Arindamji to provide an overview of our operations. Very good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you, Arti. Let me start with an overview of our current business set and the strategic outlook for the upcoming quarters. We are excited to share the remarkable progress and success we have achieved over the past year. As a leading specialty chemical manufacturer, we go beyond providing standard solutions and strides to deliver sales and high-end products to our valued customers. Our dedication to producing top quality chemical solutions has resulted in significant growth in demand of our products at our customer places. We have expanded our geographical reach to key international textile hubs, thereby enhancing our presence and influence in this market with our product line. These strategic moves allow us to leverage our strengths 
and establish a stronger foothold in the industry. Looking ahead, these trends will enable us to explore an entire untapped market, paving the way for the future growth and expansion of our company. Our robust R&D, infrastructure, and strategic alliance with renowned institutions such as HealthGuard Australia, Sasmira Institute for Research and Development Work, Eurodice CTC, a Belgium-based textile chemical company, play a pivotal role in driving our success. In the past year, we have obtained EPA certification for our market-leading antimicrobial treatment, which is non mental, and HealthGuard Amic and HealthGuard DK. One is for the antiviral product and one is for the antimicrobial. With this milestone, allow us to seize the opportunity in the US market by introducing our premium product line from HealthGuard, which has a remarkable 25 years track record of global success and safety to the all global brand like Walmart, Target, Ikea. The EPA approval permits export of treated article to the US with over 70 approved site applications, which will be done by global customer end. This achievement position us strategically to meet the market demand and establish strong partnership in the US market. We are thrilled to leverage this certification to drive our company's growth and expand our presence in the antimicrobial industry, which is a special, special niche market. Now I request uh, Sanjay to guide us through the quarterly performance of our company. Thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you, Arindamji. Good afternoon, everyone. So we, we are pleased to inform that our financial... Mr. Tisavala, uh, we were unable to hear you, sir. Can you repeat, please? Oh uh, yeah, uh, thanks Arindam ji. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Our financial performance for finance, uh, financial performance for the year 23 has been remarkable, marked by strong revenue growth and robust profitability. We are pleased to announce that our operational revenues for quarter four has reached 1,377 billion. Throughout the fiscal year, our revenues was at 5,170 million which is a 40.4% year-on-year increase. Notably, our EBITDA saw a significant improvement in quarter four and financial year 23. The EBITDA was rupees 327 million in quarter four, representing a 52% year-on-year increase and a EBITDA margin of 23.8%. Additionally, for the financial year 23, our EBITDA surged by Rupees 1,126 million, reflecting substantial 58.1% year-on-year growth with a margin of with the EBITDA margin of 21.8%. Our profitability metrics also exhibit exceptional performance. In quarter four, the PAT was rupees 260 million, which is 53% year-on-year increase, and the PAT margin stands at 18.9%. Similarly, for the entire year, fiscal year 23, our PAT was 896 million, which is a 57.4% year-on-year growth with a margin of, with a PAT margin standing at 17.3%. Additionally, we are proud to announce that the financial year 23 has been highly rewarding for the, our shareholders. Our ROC and ROE was 34.2% and 28.7% respectively underscoring the success of our strategic initiatives and efficient capital allocation. Overall, our strong financial performance in financial year 23 reflects our commitment to deliver value to our stakeholders while maintaining robust operational efficiency. We remain focused on sustainable growth and maximizing shareholders' wealth in the upcoming financial fiscal year as well. These results have now become a benchmark for us, motivating us to actively pursue new opportunities Moving forward, we remain dedicated to diversifying our customer portfolio and expanding our product range across business segments. Our commitment to growth and innovation drives us to continuously strive for excellence in meeting the evolving needs of the customers. I like to mention also the entire financial year 23's highlights. Our company has been included in the prestigious Nifty Microcap Index. This recognition reflects our strong performance and market presence in the microcap segment, and we are proud to be listing amongst esteemed companies. We are pleased to share that our company has entered the A group category of listed companies. 
This weak classification underscores our financial stability, transparency, and adherence to regulatory standards, enhancing our visibility among investors. Our credit rating has received a notable upgrade from renowned rating agencies. ICRA has upgraded our rating to A long term and A1 short term, indicating the enhanced credit worthiness of our company. Similarly, Crystal has upgraded our rating to A stable long term and A1 short term, reflecting our strong financial position and stability. These achievements validate our efforts to drive growth, strength, strengthen our market position, and build a long term value for our stakeholders. We are committed to maintain high standard of corporate governance and delivering sustainable financial performance in the future. We would like to also announce that Finotex has scheduled a webinar to provide more business updates. The webinar will set to place, take place on 2nd June Friday at 11 a.m. India time. We will be sharing the invitation on the stock exchange and we look forward for your participation over there as well. With this, we close our opening remarks and we open the call for interactive question and answer session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to answer queries from all participants, kindly restrict your questions to two at a time. You may join back the queue for follow-up questions. We have our first question from the line of Nikhil Rungta from Nippon India Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity and congratulations on uh, the numbers. Uh, so, uh, two questions from my side. First is, uh, we secured this 150 crore speciality performance chemical order from this FMCG company in Q3. So, has the full impact of that order come in Q4 or uh, we'll see more impact of or positive impact of that particular order coming in Q1 and Q2 as well? Okay. Uh, can I answer this first or you will like to yeah answer? please yeah. then i'll take the next one okay okay so well actually as uh, you know the fmcg business takes times to you know revamp and set the new systems and the product lines it is a generally it takes average two quarters minimum to get the full effect of the business and the changeover definitely takes some time so i would like to say the quarter four has not been the exact impact of you know it has not yet shown the exact impact what is expected actually but going ahead yes it has increased and that is the way we are expecting the future quarters to be get having the full uh, business of the new orders okay so by q1 q2 we'll have a full full effect of this particular order right yeah absolutely this is what we are expecting looking at okay so, uh, second is uh, coming on to our EBITDA margin. I mean, we have always guided that instead of gross margin, we should look uh, primarily at EBITDA margin. Uh, so, if I have to look up to FY18, we used to be in the range of 20 to 23 odd percent. Then from 19 to 22, we moved to 18 to 20 percent bucket. And this year, we have moved back to 20 percent plus bucket. So, do you think this 20% plus bucket of EBITDA margin is sustainable or will uh, guide uh, the range of 18 to 20% only? See, as such, we have been listed for last 50 quarters by now. And if you can also see since listing, all the quarters, whichever, like from 2011, all the 50 quarters, our EBITDAs have been ranging from minimum 16, 17% till 25%. So broadly speaking, this is something which we have been always been uh, you know, uh, performing in spite of so many downs happening globally and things like that. What happened was in 18 to 20, we were on the stay of increasing our, let's say, uh, manpower, technical manpower exhibitions. There was a lot of sales promotion costs, product audits, factory audits, product certifications, and other kinds of investments, which were, at, uh, you know, uh, as such, it's, these are revenue expenditures, of course, from the accounting point of view. But these are the long-term investments which we have been looking at, and that has started to pay off also. 
so broadly speaking uh, i think and this is the guideline which we have been talking about even since last eight quarters by now that yes uh, this is what we have been achieving if you also notice the entire years ebitda margins is almost uh, 22% right now also and that is the average of four quarters so i think yeah we can take this as a you know a benchmark for the future as well perfect yes sir last question from my side if you can guide on the growth for fy24 uh well i would like to you know uh, mention that even uh, see i mean in the last uh, 50 quarters of being listed our average cgr growth has always been 24 25% on a broad level and this is something which we have always performed the last 2 3 years has been exciting and in fact as you can also see our biggest investment in fixed assets and planting machinery has happened in the last 2 years in the last let's say 16 months uh, from where we are today or maybe last no sorry let's say 18 months from now we have invested and the 43000 ton capacity has become 104000 ton and we are quite pleased to inform you in the quarter 4 itself we have you know achieved 66% of the utilization itself in terms of the capacity so broadly the way we are looking at it is this has been something which is definitely a transitionally phase for the company which we have been discussing for the last 2 uh, years and we are very happy about where we are going and where we are heading to i think what we have performed in the last 2 years will definitely be uh, you know again achieved in the coming next 2 years uh perfect sir uh, thank you so much yeah. okay so basically around that uh, 25 to 30 odd percent growth we can easily get this is what we have been doing since a very long time in the last two years i can see we have done even 50% growth even let's say even in this quarter the year on year growth is 52% broadly even in fact the quarter on quarter growth has been also 30% or so and uh, so this is something which we were always expecting about and i think this trend should continue surely the way the kind of opportunities are coming to us from the point of view of our products getting acceptable in lot of big customers wherever we are working upon the kind of you know the attention which we are getting being located in india as well there are a lot of joint ventures opportunities which are coming to us so yes organically i think this is where we'll we we'll always be right to be got it sir that's all from my side and all the best for the future thank you thank you so much thank you thank you we have a next question from the line of ashish rati from lucky investments please go ahead Yeah, hi thanks for the opportunity sanjay ji and team uh, congratulations on consistently strong performances um sir we'll check on the capex front are we now at current utilization the amanath facility is getting completely utilized on a month on month basis uh, well uh, as such uh, in this quarter we have utilized 66% of the same and uh, so this is something which uh, which we were always expecting about also is that the match we can do and like what is the plan in terms of utilization of that capex fully by when do we achieve that and i wanted to understand what is the capex plan going ahead after that so uh, we expect that you know in the coming times in the uh, the quarters which we are seeing this capacity utilization will increase more that is number one and we had always envisaged the further expansion which will be shaping up and we have ample of land and lot of uh, planning already been done in the same premises as well and if need be we are also open to acquire certain new premises also for the coming next 2 3 years if because as such the chemical plants in india generally we need to work at least one or two year in advance that's the way it works generally for the clearances and you know all the permissions and things from the authorities so broadly speaking yes uh, we are geared for that we have ample of uh, space and already the planning has been done for further expansion which we are discussing in the last con call as well and uh, firstly we will be expanding the capacities in the existing premises and also we are looking at certain opportunities for for the uh, land uh, opportunities also which will be in similar locations or something like that where we expand for the coming few years okay uh there is one observation you know uh, we've been showing consistent growth uh, year on year quarter on quarter as competition seems to be uh, struggling in terms of growth I wanted to check, you know, what are the key areas where you are actually seeing this growth coming in? It is, uh, it is increased uh, 
uh, applications or is it also increase in volumes of the current applications where you are existing, you know, existing already? And secondly, is there any scope of future, uh, you know, increase in unexplored areas of application with the management thinking about? And if you want to elaborate on this question in the business call also, I'm happy to hear that. If you want to briefly talk about it now, uh, you know, I'll be glad. Now, see, actually what has happened is uh, in this quarter, I mean, after the financial year 23, we have done a lot more groundwork and certain more applications and product lines are being worked upon which we can always discuss on the business update because I think this call is more relevant for the for last financial year as such. Sure. But interestingly, uh, to answer that question, I can say yes. The See, we are very clear about the kind of businesses that we want to enter. Either we enter with more product lines for the same set of customers and applications, or if that chemistry is going for different applications, which has a synergy because we are producing the same kind of products. So we would like to explore those markets also for the new applications. So this has been our... Uh, let's say our USP since before, all our capacities are fungible, like we have been mentioning also. So as from that point of view, we are expanding till now, let's say till quarter four, the business growth which we have seen is more on the volume where all we have been present in the specialty fields of FMCG cleanings or textiles or oil and gas and things like that. However, going forward, there are a lot more businesses which we are looking at, similar kind of products are going for different applications and that also has been explored. So the volume which you have seen already is is totally devoted for the growth in the volumes as such in the sectors where we are present already. Right, and on the financial numbers, if I may, you know, uh, we've seen two quarters back to back of high EBITDA margin performance. Uh, shall, we, shall we assume this like a seasonality and then going forward, first quarter, second quarter, we see a dip uh, which we've seen a few years in the past, or do you think, you know, this is kind of a new normal that we can assume. We've been doing 26%, 24% now, like last two quarters. So, and you still seem to be guiding a little bit too conservative. Uh, is it just conservative guidance, sir, or is it like, you know, we actually can see some new normalcy coming in? No, actually, our our management is always uh, under committing, and, you know, we prefer to do that way as such. But let me tell you something about the point which you raised. The EBITDA margin in 2021-22 year, in the third quarter, was 26 percent 25 point something something in the quarter three you can check that also yes so i would like to mention that time the total devotion of the company was 90 percent on textiles as such as such so it is not that even only in the last two quarters we have been able to get this kind of percentage EBITDA numbers and it is also due to the kind of branding the kind of acceptability of the product which we have the kind of price demand which our products are you know you know, it's happening that way for our, whether it's a textile specialty products or cleaning hygiene products. So that is the kind of branding which has shaped up. And of course, I think that is going to not only increase the EBITDA. And one more thing I would like to mention, the EBITDA, which you are talking about the increase itself is a set of a lot of new seeds investments, which we have been doing, which is, let's say, product audit, let's say, development, R&D, manpower, exhibitions. Last week, two weeks back, we had an uh, exhibition in Tech Textile USA. We were present there. After 10 days, we have the biggest fair expenses for any textile company, textile chemical company, which is in Milan. So that is also a big cost. Almost uh, the cost is 1 crore 40 lakhs. So, I mean, there is a lot of more investments which are being going ahead as well. And in fact, these are already uh, revenue expenditures, as said. So I would like to mention here that it's not only the two quarters which has been performed well for us. I think it's, if you see an overview in the quarters, in 21, 22 years was also quite fine enough. So this is the guidelines which we have been talking about. I think uh, this can be set as a benchmark for the future as well. Great, sir. See you in the business conference uh, update, sir. And, you know, I wish you all the best on the team. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Aki. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Rohan Gupta from Nuwama. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir, and uh, congratulations the entire team on a great set of numbers and performance in this year, sir. Uh, sir, I think that this year has been marked by a remarkable performance in our detergent segment where we have been able to uh, push a couple of our products, take in market share from a leading player in the, in the country, which has been there from quite a long time. Uh, I just wanted to understand that how, what is our uh, future business prospects are on detergent segment uh, we have definitely taken one uh, big client 
and a uh, couple of products i think we have already uh, we have already been able to make in those too uh, are we in a position to use the strength of this one couple of products with a one customer to other customers as well or any other new customers are boarded uh, in detergent segment or what is the future course of action action for uh, detergent business uh thanks rohanji i would like to mention all the participants uh, which is quite important also so let me put it in a way that even the textile business has seen a growth in the quarter four compared to i mean i'm talking on a quarter on quarter basis as well and textile is such a market and a business where there is a big gestation period from the time you get the the cotton is grown till the time it is sold in the walmart mall there is a gestation period of 6 to 8 months so if there is a price rise in the cotton prices the most of the buying orders are so basically one has to view the textile business not on quarter on quarter basis but it's mainly on the six monthly basis or annual basis the covid has also shown that you know textile business has boomed even in the covid so these things do happen in textile sometimes there are let let's say some quarters may not be as strong as the previous quarters or something but if you talk about the annual point of view the entire business is already been well taken care of and the growth is seen so as such we have been doing very good in our textile specialties there is no doubt about it the new businesses of cleaning hygiene fmcg business which we have been working upon from 2019 uh, in fact i would like to mention that we are already working with uh, quite a number numerous customers maybe more than 40 to 50 customers in that and in oil and gas or detergents if you want to become one of the biggest players find price and detergents you need to go to the bigger guys of the indian markets or the foreign markets some of them are already with us some of them we are working very aggressively with them and things are looking very uh, uh, sorry sir you are sounding muffled yeah and things are looking very uh, not quite excited with the development on that line so i would like to mention going forward we will be having a lot of great opportunities on the table and we are uh, already working with uh, 40 to 50 big customers in the indian markets i think that's a good number to have about in detergents this is the way we have been progressing as such so it is not a dependability on particular uh, few customers or not but let's say even in the oil and gas companies even if you talk of the biggest oil and gas chemical producers in the world most of them will be having aramco's and honey button and you know slum budget as the biggest customers so detergent business also if you want to mention about is it is unilevers or patanjali or procter gamble or gadi these are the biggest players of let's say in the indian market at least so of course you know when you go to them and start your dialogue it is a period of 2 3 years which takes time it's a very tough market to enter from cg the entry and exit barriers are very high but yes it takes a very long time to get into it and naturally you know these important customers will always be very precious and also will be holding a good uh, brand image for the other companies to follow so this has been done very effectively we have grown our businesses to almost 40 to 50 customers for the detergents and cleaning at the same time we have expanded a lot more product profile portfolio for that segment that has been ever increasing and we are getting good response for that as well so i would like to mention it is not to you know about the kind of uh, this that it is depending on one or two customers but it's a global picture so if you can uh, give some share that what is the contribution of revenue from detergent site now where you see that this business heading and over next couple of years what can be the revenue contribution from this site? so i can tell you in the quarter four uh, i mean let me uh, mention about the quarter four only actually because this is uh, this could be more informative so let's say about the quarter for the almost let's say 60% is still uh, textile as such and uh, 40% is the cleaning hygiene business this is something similar to what we had also experienced before maybe it is 58 and 42 something like that and where you see that in moving in next few years the ratio is like it's going to change or it will be changed back See, I would like to mention here that as such, the textile has also started picking up. Number one, of course, the the percentage growth of the detergent cleaning hygiene business will be much higher because it started from a lower level. So of course, the percentage growth will be higher. So going forward, I would like to mention also if the textile is in back in its peak, which was in two thousand and twenty one, 
third quarter. And if we have the detergent business also on the peak, which is uh, yet to be experienced actually, which is not yet experienced. So I think then the, the mix can be also 50-50. In terms, of revenue. Sir, in terms of revenue, not volumes. We are talking about only uh, revenues here. Yes, right, sir. And sir, margin profile will be slightly higher in team and hygiene or will be similar to textiles? See, the, we, are we, always, we are like an EBITDA percentage given company as such. And uh, here I would like to mention that in textiles, the gross margins are much higher. But at the same time, you have a lot of expenses, a lot of exhibitions, factory audits, product certifications, uh, manpower, development, and things like that, which are very costly. So ultimately, it boils down to the same EBITDA margin. Detergents, may, what happens is because it's a high volume businesses and things like that, the margins, the gross margins are generally lower, but the EBITDA margins are similar to that. That is the way we are working up. At the same time, what is also shaping up is that once our fixed cost has already been taken care of, the variable cost is not so much so we are able to also have the uh, you know the efficiency handling also on that part which is also contributing to a healthy beta margin so at a beta level you want to say that uh, both the segments will be having similar margin yes almost similar margins yes okay uh, sir in this category of cleaning and hygiene uh, though i think it's largely right now driven by the detergent uh, are we planning, and as you mentioned, that we are definitely expanding the product basket. Uh, like in textiles, we have almost, we have we touch almost all the aspects of textiles, in, starting from the raw material washing to end product processing. Uh, I understand that in hygiene and cleaning and hygiene, there is a huge chain of product there as well. So, what is the thought process here? Uh, how we want to expand the product basket, like right now? Or focusing on only one or two verticals, or slowly expanding uh, across the product basket, or what is the thought process here? And will we need to uh, go for any inorganic growth, an inorganic route to drive this growth, or we plan to do everything through uh, organic economy? See, actually, in the cleaning and hygiene FMCG sector, there are two kinds of businesses which we have been doing. Uh, one is that we produce our specialty chemicals which are going to the detergent companies and they use it as an additive and a booster for their enhancement of the product lines. That is one business, that is B2B business. And then again, we have another product line where we have, like our plants are FDA certified, FDA certified plants. So we do produce our hand washes and toilet bowl cleaners, dishwashes, which we are not we are offering only for the institutions. The institution means hospitals or hospitalities, hotels, and things like that, which goes in a pack of 25 kilos or 5 liters, something like that, not the retail ones as such. So retail one is something which is not our forte, nor we want to enter that segment. That's totally off our targets. And uh, so as such, there are like two segments in the same. We are increasing our product portfolio in that segment, depending on the needs of the customers. We are also helping them to solve a lot of so we are also stepping in to solve a lot of problems which they face due to seasonal changes, due to the applications issues or storage issues and things like that. We are working and we are quite happy where we are getting the success about. Now, regarding your inorganic acquisitions, no. As such, whatever we are discussing is totally organic. We do not need any inorganic acquisitions to expand our portfolio on that. And uh, we are, uh, as such, we have already done an inorganic acquisition in 2011 after the IPO. And that has also flared very well uh, with Biotech's Malaysia coming into. And we still own 72% there. Uh, however, we are not looking at any organic acquisitions right now. I mean, uh, there are on and off a lot of topics which keeps coming on the table. But right now, our focus is totally to also, you know, have the organic uh, growth digested because there are so many opportunities which are coming now. So I think this is the time for us to focus on our strengths and organic uh, growth on that line. Uh, so just last week on textiles, and I'll come back in queue. Uh, we have seen definitely a uh, muted uh, business dynamics in textiles in last one year. Uh, you see and you have mentioned that you have already started seeing uh, visibility of growth in textiles business. So mm -hmm. this is primarily coming from international market or domestic market or uh, what is driving this optimism in textile business and if you can give some kind of uh, growth uh, uh, numbers in textile business for next year. 
So I would like to mention here, as such, uh, the, the growth in the textile is coming also from the kind of product offerings we are doing, the solutions which we have been providing. That is number one. At the same time, we are also being well accepted in most of the, let's say in India with almost, let's say whether it's acrylic, wool, nylon, polyester, we are there with all the biggest customers of India, right from China, JCT, Oro Dying, Oro Textiles, Mavi Spinning, Waymans, Baspara, you name the customers and we should be working, Himat Finka, Indocounts for that matter. So as such, what happens in textile, it's a quite a me too business. And uh, once you have the premium customers of that segment, we have a lot more others semi corporates uh, customers following them and you know going for the me to kind of a, you know giving us the businesses for that so we have been very successful in our strategies on that front at the same time we are also grabbing the wallet shares of the customers the kind of customers we are working right now are the india's biggest customers most of them might be listed also and we are able to give them great technical solutions and technical services we have almost 100 distributors stockists in india almost 35 technical, highly qualified uh, technocrats who are servicing the customers day in, day out. So we are, in fact, becoming one of the uh, dependable suppliers for them. And uh, this is the way we have been getting the, their attention as well. And this has been shaping the growth also. Well, as the international markets are not too, uh, you know, it's not getting too attractive right now, looking at the last quarter from the point of view of the orders for these textile customers. But as soon as domestic is picking up, we are increasing our volume space. So these are also helping us to increase our businesses in textile speciality. That's the way we are looking at it. Uh, so just last week, if I'm allowed, and uh, it's basically related to working capital. We have seen that uh, uh, this year inventories and uh, both trade distributors have seen a decline uh, in the current year, while we have seen that there was an inferior. So why this uh, reduction in working capital is taking in entries and trade receivables? I mean, how it was uh, achieved? And uh, this is primarily because of a shift from, I mean, a higher share of uh, uh, cleaning and hygiene where probably maybe the working capital requirement would be lower. And this is going to be trend going forward. Just want to your highlights on that. So partly, yes, you are right. The more we focus on FMCG and cleaning hygiene businesses, there will be a much betterment in the working capital uh, for sure because the textile is a little bit, we, uh, we can say it has a traditional style of a little longer working capital day, but that's also fine enough um, as long as our ROC and ROEs are maintained well from the textile point of view. But yeah, the more and more we focus on the cleaning hygiene businesses, we can expect some much better uh, uh, working capital cycle. So as such, we have uh, improved the working capital quite substantially in the part of, I mean, let's say in the entire year as such. So the cycle which was 140 days today is almost 85 days or something like that at the moment as such uh, we have reduced the uh, receivables and uh, rather i would like to say that we have reduced the payables also and in spite of that in spite of reducing the payables our working capital cycle has still seen a great improvement uh, so thank you very much for answering all the questions thank you so much thank you we have a next question from the line of Anupam Agarwal from Lucky Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity and congratulations, uh, team, on great numbers. Uh, Sanjay, sir, my question to you was on the volume front. Uh, I remember Q3 transcript uh, is, is uh, uh, I'll ask you this question on Q4 volumes and uh, uh, great execution. You hit that target definitely. Uh, on a 55,000 ton base in FR23, uh, what are you looking in terms of, uh, you know, order book uh, visibility for the coming year? Uh, what are your targets in terms of achieving volume? Uh, well, I would like to, uh, on this note, I would like to mention if we focus on the quarter four, the quarter four itself, the volumes are 17,300 approximately. Exactly. If we analyze it, it is already 68,000 or 69,000 some number as such. Yes. Uh, even for the the top line also, if you can just that is also like 50 crores of analyzed uh, business, and even the pack levels are 105 crores broadly. So as such, uh, you know, because like I have been talking about also, I mean, this has we have been talking since long that every quarter, we, I mean, we are getting a great uh, business uh, coming up to us. But I think rather than looking at the entire year, always it is better to benchmark also the last two, three quarters because then we can be, you know, 
this is something which we would like to translate in the coming quarters as such. As you rightly said, the last financial year, the volumes 22-23 is 55,000. However, if you just analyze the quarter for it, it is 69,000 or so. So as such, we, for us, we will be not looking at entire years 55,000 as benchmark. But yeah, going forward, we'll be also looking at quarter three, quarter four uh, volumes and uh, selected quarter four volume which has a substantial growth compared to quarter two and quarter three also. I think that can be a good benchmark for the future. Understood. Uh, if you can talk a little bit on your realization, which uh, again in Q3 and Q4 was slightly lower than the first half, uh, what led to the fall in realization? I understand the business mix has changed, uh, which is one of the factors. Uh, yeah. Any other factor you uh, would like to call out and uh, 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 going forward, uh, what what is the kind of uh, uh, base that one can look at? Yeah, I'll give you what is our business model. Our business model is proper solution providing business. That is not number one. However, what we have seen in the last, let's say, two, three quarters, as we have all witnessed also, most of the basic chemical pricing, let's say plastic, which was 70 rupees today, it is at 35 rupees, for example. And of course, you know, which was ha what was happening in 2021 and 22 was the prices of the chemicals was going up, the freight cost was going up, and also the containers availability was a proportional point. And everybody had increased their inventory level. Now, with this reverse trend, the prices of the chemicals going down, the freight are getting almost to the pre-COVID levels or something like that. The availability of the containers are like uh, totally not an issue right now. Of course, there has been a drop in the, you know, ex and also then the businesses are also not, uh, share, you know, the volumes are also not that intact. And also, the, so everyone is looking at a lower inventory levels right now mm -hmm. in the world in general. Now, that also, in fact, adds to the problems of reducing the further businesses of most of the chemical companies as such. So what happens with that? As such, we are a beta-driven company. There has to be some kind of, let's say, price uh, readjustments to be done in extent or detergent which has been happening with most of the companies also. But keeping in mind, when we are doing that, we always make sure our EBITDA percentage are intact. And not only percentages, also we take care of the EBITDA per kilos. Because when it is going down, even if your EBITDA percentages are intact, you still have a lower EBITDA per kilo earnings, like you can understand. So we take care of that also. So yes, there has been some minor adjustments on that part. And uh, let me also mention here, as you have rightly pointed out, the cleaning hygiene FMCG businesses are at a lower realization per kilo kind of things. And when you, uh, you know, have a sum of the entire volumes and the turnover, yes, you will see a good impact because of that also. That's the way this water four has been worked upon. Understood. Uh, just to touch upon this question, uh, the, the comment that you made, uh, how frequently is the price adjustment happening in our business model across the FMCG and textile business? See, textile, you know, uh, let's say the way we are working in textile, like if you if you start a product with Raymond's in 2007 or 8, the product is still running till now. It's a perennial business. We are not, uh, at the same time, this is not a government tender-based business or a commitment-based business that even if the price goes up, the cost goes up, and they will not revise it. So more or less, generally what happens in the textile specialty business, as long as the trend is there of the, at that fabric or substrate, the businesses are still there. From a technique i mean from a practical point of view generally the customers give us the purchase orders for two months and then you know they give the dispatches on intimation so after that we can always readjust our prices when it goes up and for the prices to correct down and getting it down textile actually is not uh, too much a challenge for that matter what we do generally in places where we have a strategic kind of an alliance or we are looking at something more bigger so we Let's say in a finishing package, if we are supplying two products and we are trying to pitch up three more products, so we try to give a certain more discounts on the first two products in view of getting the further more orders in order to get an overall more basket of the products. So that is the strategy which we are doing. It's not a forced reduction of the pricing as such. See, we are not into those kinds of businesses as such we have been mentioning in our phone call. Our products are not a CEO-driven business. It is a caustic hair, 99% ka hi hota hai, soda 99% ka hi hota hai, glacial acid. It doesn't work like that. So for us, the customer is not asking us what is not in fact bothered about what is the cost of our product. They are more working on what delivery it is, what kind of performance it is giving. 
all the kinds of products what we are producing right from pre treatment dyeing painting finishing together there are 25 functional chemicals all con- together only contribute 3% cost to the reserve which is only 3 divided by 25 0.15% cost so the cost is insignificant as such see we can use the price reduction as a what tool to grow the wallet share that is the way we have been doing that is about the textiles now coming to the cleaning and hygiene business as we have also witnessed that there has been a lot of corrections in the price of let's say soda ash let's say costing let's say uh, slurry and uh, so obviously there has been a quite a trend in the last two quarters of a, i mean and a price correction has been happening so yes on and off every 3 4 months we have to review where we are standing upon and then we have to be with these uh, important customers and price it well keeping in mind the bit up per kilo and a bit up per kg and i think that's the fair way of business approach when uh, you know which we have with our customers uh, understood understood uh, just on your uh, opening remark wanted to understand uh, uh, what is the percentage or an absolute uh, r&d cost that uh, given our pipeline uh, in the fmcg business is strong enough uh, what is the kind of r&d that one uh, can look at uh, here i would like to uh, mention as such uh, you know in the last uh, in the last 2 years our business has almost three times it was uh, 184 crores in 21 then it was 299 uh, I'm, i'm i'm sorry uh, uh, our business was 218 crores in uh, 21 and it has almost become two and a half times uh, as we are uh, looking at or let's say if you analyze the quarter for it is three times also mm-hmm. so in the last two three years there has been a lot of uh, r&d developments also but the percentage will go down as such because the sales business has gone up very high we have interestingly developed uh, you know a lot of more manpower has been added upon in the current quarters and lot of developments have been done at various technologies and universities so as such it is still within the 1% range okay okay yeah. uh, lastly if i may uh, just want to understand are uh, capex uh, going forward you mentioned will it's still on the planning stage uh, Uh, what uh, volume what size of capex uh, are we looking at uh, is it going to be similar uh, to what we did in the past uh, two tranches or is it going to be something bigger and larger see the, the capex which we will be looking at uh, firstly i'll tell you about the source of the fund will be all internal approvals right now yeah. as you are also in uh, uh, about our cash and equivalents are quite sizable it is almost 135 to 140 crores by and large and uh, we are not having any working loans we do not have any uh, term loans at the moment and uh, kind of uh, operating ca- cash flow generated to a beta percentage is also becoming one of the highest we have achieved or maybe best in the industry also i don't I, that's what i heard also so uh, coming to the point here would be that whatever funding will be done will be totally on the basis of internal approvals the investment which we have already done in the past is almost 50 60 crores in the past in the last two years i think going forward uh, we will uh, not require more than that for sure and that will be always be managed with the uh, accrual so as such it will be below 50 crores so just uh, 50 crores go to add another roughly 45 50 60 thousand ton capacity Well, the initial, initial capex what we will be doing will be done in the existing plant as such, and that will not be so expensive from the capex point of view, because we have already laid the foundation. The buildings are there, the land admins and other things are already well invested, and uh, you know approvals are in place. So the initial, let's say, twenty crores or fifteen twenty crores will be also giving us a good capacity on that line. However, if we go for a new premises and uh, mm-hmm. So then there will be a you know land acquisition cost and things like that. Perfect, understood. Uh, thank you. That's all from my side. And wish you all the best in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Ankur Periwal from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just you know a couple of follow-ups on the uh, the cleaning and the hygiene segment which you commented earlier. Uh, so we're just trying to understand this bit better. Uh, what is the revenue contribution from this segment uh, in FY23? Uh, it's almost uh, 210 crores. Okay, and I'm just trying to compare it year on year. What of the turnover? Yeah, sorry. Sure. And how was this number in last year? FY22. Oh, well, that was uh, 64 crores that time. 
Sure. And, and uh, you know, when we look at the cleaning hygiene, uh, you know, business, while well, you did mention that we have been launching quite a, a number of products in that segment, uh, but this business is, is more contractual, as in maybe a short term or a one year, three year sort of a contract, or, uh, uh, and how are the, uh, the economics or the arrangements there? So, so let me just correct, uh, not correct, let me add some infos on that. So it is uh, 207 crores, uh, the cleaning hygiene FMCG business for the current year out of the 517 crores. Okay. And the last year was uh, almost, uh, let's say, 38, 40 crores. Sure. No worries. Uh, and uh, so from the uh, contract. Yeah, can you again? Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. I, I was just checking, you know, from a uh, revenue ramp up in this business from around 40 to 200 crore plus. Uh, this incremental revenue is largely contractual. And if yes, then, you know, what is the typical duration of the contract? And, you know, how, how do we look at the volume, pricing, mix, et cetera? No, actually, this is the business which we have been there for the last three, four years, and uh, gradually it has been picking up. We have expanded a lot more geographies on that, a lot many customers, a lot many different applications of those uh, product lines also. So we are getting more uh, into that kind of a business. Uh, as such, nothing is contracted. Nothing is a tender base or something like this. As long as our qualities, our prices, and our uh, new innovations are helping out, the customers are there. And also, let me tell you, this is something which I would like to mention to the participants. Like, the biggest two competitors in this segment is BSF and Dow. BSF is, uh, like BSF is the, and Dow also for the matter, is one of the biggest global companies. And uh, ironically, they are not producing anything in India. All their product lines are coming. Uh, so there is a big gestation period for the importers to go and store it here in India. And uh, and also, in fact, they have not customized their product lines from the Indian water point of view and the cleaning sector point of view. All the products, whatever they are making, is coming from Europe, which also had a hurdle in the last one year due to the Russia-Ukraine wars and the gas shortage in Belgium, uh, the entire Europe as such. So that has also disrupted in the past, and they have to shift from one end, one of the geographies to another one. So going forward, what we are also uh, quite hopeful is because these companies are not able to give customized solutions. They are not able to understand the technical problems on the floor as such. And of course, for them, this business is not one of their important areas as such. But yeah, ironically, these are the biggest leaders and we are grabbing the market shares for them, whether it's in any of the customers, whether it's in Levers or Patanjali or wherever. So we are approaching and uh, we are getting the businesses wherever we can as soon as possible. These are not contractual businesses. These are like uh, perennial businesses. Sure, sure, sir. Uh, that, that's very helpful. So, uh, you know, on an annual basis, when we are guiding for, uh, let's say, at a 20 or 25 percent of revenue growth over a two, three year window, uh, the, how, how do you see the share of, let's say, cleaning and hygiene, and even oil and gas is one other business segment which you had highlighted, plus the textiles bit. So, how do you see the revenue mix changing here? See, actually, let me talk about the oil and gas businesses, more about uh, government tender kind of a businesses, and I would not uh, say to, you know, our participants that we bank on that. As I said, we do not bank on this. It's more like a hit and run businesses. The perennial businesses, or let's say the COVID-proof businesses, are the cleaning and hygiene businesses, which is, in fact, uh, one of the needs of the, you know, at the, of the masses at large. So this is the focus area where we have textiles also. Yes, one can postpone the need uh, requirements, but, you know, some way or the other, and the business cycle also shapes up after two quarters or so. So again, the textile business is also shape up in the Norway process. So going forward, right now, we are very aggressive on textiles as well. We are getting a great, uh, let's say, visibility globally, and uh, we are just uh, trying to get all the opportunities and uh, converting it one by one. And textiles, we are very bullish about it from the time from now on as such. Cleaning hygiene, we have been working very strong. Some great, uh, uh, you know, some new uh, top management which has been added who were earlier in the uh, multinational companies as business heads. And now they are also joined Finotex a couple of months back in this quarter current. So this is also something which we are very much uh, setting up a great foundation. And I think in the future, we will be quite known as a strong FMCG and a cleaning hygiene company as well. Sure, sir. And, and lastly, if I may, uh, just on the margins bit, uh, while, you know, obviously operating leverage uh, uh, did play out, you know, in terms of a margin expansion this year, uh, trying to understand, you know, our, our policies on the, the RM inflation bit, 
uh, both for textile as well as uh, the cleaning uh, and hygiene uh, business there. So, uh, you know, there, there's been already a correction in the prices of the raw materials. I wouldn't say that the price will uh, go down further, but I don't doubt it right now. And as such, it's almost on the pre-COVID levels and things like that due to less demand globally or some, you know, we can say so. And also the trade rates have been readjusted almost. And uh, so, of course, when the prices of the raw material goes down, every company will have certain raw materials of a higher price as well uh, till the time these are consumed as such. So I think so that will also help us for the future quarters to have a better EBITDA margins, let's say, from that point of view, once we get the raw materials at a lower price as well. And uh, so... That's the way it is. So, I mean, we, we are generally not having a long-term purchases for raw materials. We are always having a, let's say, a quarterly view on the textile chemicals or for even the cleaning hygiene, not more than two months or three months. So all, that's the kind of inventory levels we prefer to keep. And the pricing at the customer level is also revised in a the, in the similar time frame? I agree very much that way. Exactly, almost that way. Two months, three months ka window, rata, that is the way we have been working upon Sure, sir. Uh, that's very much helpful. Uh, thank you and all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Ankit Bansal from AV Investments. Please go ahead. Hello. Oh, yes, you're audible. Thank you. Sir, congratulations for excellent results. Sir, my question is, you have been recently into various events like Ludhiana show in US now, now going to Italy. How will you see the traction of your products in the market? How will you see the markets are responding while you are showcasing your new line products? Are they excited? How is the market share being dependent on the kind of events you are doing? You're showcasing your products, your views, sir? Uh, well, uh, actually, we have started uh, participating in almost all the trade fairs and exhibitions globally since 2019-20 onwards. If you can also go to our website, you'll see a lot many exhibitions. Uh, images and pictures wherever we have been participating. So whether it's whether it's in Indonesia or Turkey, we had in Turkey also a couple of months back, and or Bangladesh for that matter, or Vietnam. So we have been participating in almost all the trade fairs. As such, uh, this is the place because uh, the brand which Fanotex has, the brand image which Fanotex has, you know, we are recognized as. We need to be present everywhere. There are so many kinds of new opportunities which are coming up. So many companies are looking at the ways to enter into Indian markets to through a channel either we can produce in India, like we had a tie-up with Yorodai CTC in Belgium, which is a Unilever plant producing specialty chemicals in Belgium. We got a tie-up with them also in the last two years. That is also helping up. So we are looking at a lot of kinds of opportunities. And of course, uh, once you are in the marketplace, you get uh, kept into a lot many opportunities. Traction is there in terms of volumes. We are, this also helps us to reinforce and share with us the latest technologies, the latest kinds of solutions and sustainable products which we have launched. So this is definitely helping us. We were the lead sponsors in Ljubljana also, like you rightly said. In Itma also, we'll be there in Milan in the next uh, two weeks or so. Yeah, are, this is are, always a part of the business. So we are getting a good uh, response. For the are, the cu- are the customers excited while you're showcasing your products? They will like, oh, what, what kind of product? I have never seen that. Are they are very... Oh yeah, I mean, uh, sometimes we we get uh, we, the excitement levels increases a lot because what we have also done is we have worked upon replacements of basic chemicals like we have replaced soda ash from their systems. We have we, we are working on the goals of the textile customers. The biggest challenge for any textile company right now is how much TDS, BOD, COD you can control and how can you be more ESG compliant and things like that because the norms and the authorities are very clear globally about the discharges and all. So what we have been doing is with the kind of product lines we have, we are able to achieve and meet their goals. And this is the places where we have been able to get a better innovative product lines also. In Sometimes, in fact, we are increasing the cost of the customers or for the chemicals. But how we are doing it is we reduce the utility cost of the customers. Let's say we reduce the temperature of the customer, we reduce the water cycles of the customers, we reduce the steam cost of the customers. So that is the excitement which they have when they understand about us. So this is the way we are getting, and uh, this is also contributing to the growth, actually. Okay, okay. So my next question is, sir, any, sir, my update on Equistrike, sir, it's been so while. Any, sir, new? 
I mean, uh, what happens in uh, most of the product lines which we keep working upon and developing as such, uh, the way we look at this, uh, you, we are able, let's say, for the textiles, that's for detergents and cleaning business, these are more private businesses like corporate businesses. Whereas when you are talking about Aqua Strike and other kind of product lines, you are totally, totally depending on the governments. And which, of course, will be this, you know, it's a, it's, it's a process. It's not a process. It's a very slow process globally. And, of course, in the COVID times, uh, the WHO has been quite uh, busy in their own activities for the COVID-19 and things like that. So right now, what is more important for us is to focus on the strength, the kind of traction which we have seen in detergent cleaning FMCG is uh, something which is, uh, we, we have to focus on these businesses more right now and get it to a level where we'll be just one of the world's global strongest players in that business. So I think this is the place uh, where we are looking at right now. And so, we will uh, keep focusing on our main strength, which is textile specialities and detergents and cleaning hygiene businesses. Okay. Sir, for this, uh, you to be a world leader, how much time, five years, three years? Are you, but are you planning for that? Uh, five years, three years down the line, 10 years down the line? So I would like to say there is no timeline for these things as such. It is more on the kind of the right things which we are doing. I mean, the, what is important is that our management has the aspirations. And uh, I think this is what we are, we are on the right track from the point of efficiency in handling the, uh, you know, the EBITDA margins, the cash operations, the capex. And uh, there has been a great uh, attraction on the kind of uh, product lines and the customers which we are getting. So I think uh, uh, we, we are in the right shape and we are on the right track right now. So we, we keep focusing on what we are doing. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Aman Vishwakarma from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hello. Congrats on the good numbers. Uh, my question pertains to the, the detergent cleaning and hygiene business, right? So the question is as to what what is enabling us to have such sort of, such sort of stellar growth, right? So, I mean, what is what does your product have different than your competitors, or is there any problem that you guys have solved? that is enabling you to have such growth rates. If you want me to express to you, the, you know, in detail about this, I'll give you a different analogy here. Now, yeah. like I said about BSF and the DAO, okay, they have their products called Sokolan and Acusol. They are the global leaders of the world. They produce one product in Europe using the European water, and they are selling that product to the world as such as a solution for the, uh, you know, detergent companies and things like that. What is ironical to note, firstly, in India, every 20 kilometers or maybe lesser, there is a difference in the water. Once the water quality is different, the detergents do not perform. Even if you carry a soap from Bombay to Gujarat or any place, and you can see the foam, the cleaning efficiency of the soap changes as per the quality of the water. The reason being there are a lot of metal ions in that, calcium, magnesium, iron. I mean, there are so many metallic uh, ions and uh, things which are making the water very hard as such. Now, even if you notice, let's say, let me give an example of McDonald's. The McDonald's burger, which has been sold in India, will have something an Indian flavor. Maybe it was, uh, you know, paneer or aloo tikki kind of a version from India, but the same thing will not be there in Malaysia. It will be some different peanut sauce and things. However, BSF and Dow have the same product design for the world, which is quite, let's say, ridiculous from our point of view. Because for us, in fact, when we are customizing our product lines, it's we would like to mention here, we have the specialized customized products for the South Indian soap makers, for the North Indian soap makers also. Because in South Indian soap, uh, this thing, the water qualities are different from the North Indian guys. So this is the kind of customizations we are into as such. Whereas this has not been followed by BSF and Dow for the reasons perhaps would be that this is not a great product line for them. Or maybe, let's say customization is adding another SKUs and what are the kind of businesses or, you know, what they can expect before adding an SKU or whatever it could be. At the same time, we also have to understand here, earlier, the raw materials was also controlled in these countries, in Europe and things like that, acrylic and things. Now, acrylic acid is coming from BPCL in Kerala. Their plant capacity per batch is 22,000 tons, or 2,200 tons per batch. Now, the availability of the raw materials is come to India, made in India kind of concept has come up. There is no need for us to buy. I mean, of course, we do still import the raw materials, but then the point is here that if we make in India, we use Indian raw materials, and we can definitely be not only economical, but we can customize the products. We are giving technical services, 
and the best thing is there is no inventory required from the customer's point of view if you want to if a customer wants to buy a product from dow they have to wait for 3 months they have to open lcs and then there are delays and shipments which we have experienced in the last few years so who will like to do it when you have a product line that is customized as per them there is a we can supply in one day time or something things like that which is economical of course at the same time the quality is more customizations and we have an upper edge so it's not only the quality it's a quality is updated we understand the customers and giving them the right product and this is something which we are doing customization but this is not been done by these european companies so this also happens in textiles by the way most of the european companies they are functioning in such, in such a way that they are not able to adjust their product lines or they do not want to adjust it for their policy point of view or whatever it is and we are the guys who are quite agile and you know we are quite fast in getting into the and spotting the opportunity and grabbing it so i think this is the way we have been looking at and this is this is this strategy is something our usp i would like to say okay fair enough so i mean does this imply that there is no other major play do, player doing this i would not like to mention that i mean everyone is there in the market if at all they are but let's say talk, talk about the big guys the big names these are the big two names like bsf and dow they are controlling still the 90% business of the world so maybe 85 or 90 so i think let's talk about that only because our capacities and our customers are the ones who were using from them once upon a time so and also the kind of new customers which we are working upon or grabbing very soon are also their clientels so i would like to look at bsf and dow and that is the brand image where we have also achieved about so i think that's the right uh, barometer for us to look at okay fair so and last one is on the capacity so could you like give me give me a breakdown of this 104 metric tons per annum capacity like how much of that is for the textiles and how much is for detergent and how much is for cleaning and hygiene so i would like to mention on that note that our capacities are all fungible it's so like in the same capacities all are well uh, adaptable to any kind of product lines all are ss316l reactors column condensers receivables thermofluid boilers steam boilers generators power transformers in fact we have the solar systems also set up now in this uh, coming uh, month we are setting it up so what i would like to mention here was that we already all the capacities are fungible so it's like a that is like a frying pan you can make uh, this vegetable or that vegetable something like that and then that is the way it's a batch wise production it's not a continuous production so if it's a continuous production yes there is a, then you can bifurcate this continuous production is for this product this is for this product things like that but for us it is a batch wise and that is the reason you can see our asset turnover ratios are 7 to 8 times minimum so i think that's also uh, underlining that this is a truly specialty chemical because see i'll tell you don't look at us from a only manufacturing specialty performance chemical we are a hard core technical solution provider and we have lot of sustainable product lines this is very important it's not only the product what we make but it's also the services which we provide and we are very closely having great relations with the customers and ex- making them excited with the new product lines which we are bringing in day in day out so this is all a uh, package kind of an approach which we have for the customers and that's helping us for the growth okay and this last one is uh, could you give me the total volume for the year like volume across all three segments yes yeah, the total volume for the year was uh, 55000 tons broadly fair so that's all from my end of quarter four in the quarter yeah. four it was 17300 okay got it thank so, you so, yeah yeah so, yeah so yeah that's all from my end thank you yeah thanks thank you Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Sanjay Tiprewala for closing comments. Over to you. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your uh, time and participation. Uh, we look forward to see you soon on 2nd June, 11th, uh, Friday, 11 a.m. And uh, please feel free to contact our investor relation team or Bharat Modi or our management also. Uh, we are always very open to answer all the queries of the investors. and. Uh, Uh, we'll get back to you as soon as possible once we get some queries or something about it uh, thank you very much have a good week ahead thank you chorus uh, thank you sir on behalf of finotex chemicals limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your line